Hello and welcome back to some more room audio. Today we're going to be talking about CD players. Yes, I know, this is a bit strange, isn't it? Because CD players have largely been sidelined by streaming because we all love a bit of streaming, loads of choice, really easy, convenient. You can do it casually or you can do it hardcore with the likes of Inuus or Grimm or, or others. Um, so, question mark, why a CD player, why now in 2023? Well, let me try and answer that with my own personal circumstances because I think perhaps that gives you an idea as to why somebody might want to get back into CDs and a CD player in particular. Now, as you might recall, if you've been following this channel for a little while, I actually had my first baby. I didn't squeeze it out, that was the wife, um, but that was back in November and things changed quite considerably when that happened. Um, and I think most significantly is the, the amount of time or lack of time you have for your hobbies and pursuits as a dad or indeed as a mum. Um, it's pretty full on having a kid, particularly when you're in your 40s and doing it for the first time. It's a bit of a, a shell shock. So I found myself coming out to listen to music, but I'd have maybe a maximum of an hour. Otherwise, I'd been throttled for not preparing milk, sterilising bottles, washing up, etc, etc. So if I had an hour, um, what would I do? Well, I put the streamer on, I'd flick through some different songs, and I love streaming. I love discovering new music through streaming. But what it doesn't do very well is allow you to kind of get emotionally carried away if all you're doing is flicking between different songs or not even listening to the whole song. Now, I know, I know you could sit there and listen to a whole album on streaming, but it's a bit like when cable television arrived for the first time and you get the remote control and you sit there and you flick through all the different channels and you've almost got a slight... ADHD with the uh, the TV controller. Well, that's how I am sometimes with streaming, particularly to start with. I can explore a bit and that's fine and it's fun. But really, if you've got an hour, that's not that satisfying. And I found myself looking towards one album or two albums and maybe do bits of both. And I thought, do you know what? I would like to do this simply. I'd like to do this with an experience of that artist, maybe get a bit of tactile quality to it. And I thought, well, look, I've got lots of CDs and I don't really play them anymore. I used to like looking through the leaflets and that used to be exciting to get CDs at Christmas or, or birthdays. So I went back to that and I thought, do you know what, let's go for a CD player. I can put an album, I can listen to it for an hour, I can sit back and relax. I won't be touching the remote control, I won't be flicking around unless the track is a bad one. Um, and it will be satisfying. So I thought, let's go down this path. And actually, it's been quite liberating just putting a bit of physical media on, having that experience of looking through the booklet and kind of reading what the artist intended or reading the lyrics, because sometimes that's quite uh, interesting as well, to actually think about what the artist is trying to say and what their song is about, really get into the music, um, and just go for it. So CD players are my new sort of thing for the moment. And I thought, right, where do I start with CD players? I used to have a, um, a CXZ Transport, which was very good. And that went into a number of different DACs. But I always felt with my CXZ Transport that, you know, it's of a level, which is good up to about a thousand pounds. Really good value that transport. You can probably take it further if you want to as well. But really an all-in-one unit might be quite good. You know, DAC inside, CD player there, very simple, straight into your preamp or you're integrated and away you go. Where do you look first? Well, in the UK, one of the most venerable um, makers of CD players for a long time now has been a company called Cyrus. Now, I remember when I was when I was a lad back in the late 90s, when I was at university, I'd flick through the What Hi-Fi magazines and almost always, every year, Cyrus would appear for their CD players. And there were two thoughts. Firstly, it was, wow, I'm a student, I can't afford that, but I really, really, really want to listen to it. And secondly, ooh, Cyrus products, they're quite ugly, aren't they? Yeah, I said it, I put it out there, I know I shouldn't have uh, mentioned that, but they used to look kind of like mad professory 1980s computery things and I didn't like the aesthetics. Now, actually, fair play to Cyrus. They kept on going with that aesthetic and still have to a degree, and you'll see in a minute, it's a bit different, but still keep going with the aesthetic for a number of years, and they've kind of made it retro chic. It's kind of cool now in a weird way. I actually prefer it now in 2023 to when I did what I did back then in the kind of late 90s, early 2000s. So, yeah, I, I kind of think it's maybe uh, a matter of taste if you like Cyrus products and how they look or not. But the new range and what we're reviewing today is the Cyrus CDI XR. So it's their top of the range CD player and it looks a bit more modern. Now, let me grab it and talk to you about it in more detail. This is it. This is the Cyrus unit. Now, as you can see, 
small room audio, relatively small CD player. That's quite cool, isn't it? And looks wise, actually looks quite modern. Doesn't look like a mad professor's thing anymore. You've got touch sensitive buttons on the front, which work very nice. They have like a satisfying click to them. Although I do prefer personally an actual button you can push in, but maybe that's just me, but these work pretty well for touch sensitive. And you've got all the usual features you might expect there, uh, eject, um, repeat, fast forward, skip track and play and pause. And then of course it's a slot loading CD player. And then you've got a nice screen on there, which is very clear as well on the power button. On the back, this is where things might get a little bit controversial. You've got um, a power socket with two pins. And then you've got your um, RCA out, no balance to be found here. Now, interesting first, criticism I'm going to say about this product we'll get to the good bits but the first kind of major criticism is that the power socket and the RCA um, outs are very close together now if you like me have a aftermarket power cable and it might be one of those Furitech ones and it's kind of big and circular it does get in the way of these RCA outs and it's really annoying what I would say though on a positive note is that the standard kettle lead going into here doesn't seem to make much difference the sound over a fancy pants cable. Now, some of you say that's for all things, but for me, sometimes a fancy pants cable can change the sound of a product. With this one, it seemed to sound relatively similar. Anyway, that is annoying. Design wise, I'm a bit irritated by that. And then you've got digital outputs here of um, optical and coaxial. Um, and you've got a little upgrade piece here and you've got an interesting bit over here which i'll draw your attention to it is a serial port do you remember serial ports back in the day you used to put them into printers and then into your big behemoth pcs and a serial port cable looks a little something like this um why have you got this well we'll get to that a bit later but it's so you can connect their uh, external power supply uh, the XR power supply, should you want to, to upgrade the CD player. Now, that would be the second part of the review. We talk about the Sonics with the upgraded uh, power supply, um, but we'll start off just with the CDI XR on its own. But fairly basic. I think the other thing to note here, which again, starts to grind my gears a little bit, is that there is no digital input, not even one solitary um, kind of, you know, optical input for example, which would, you know, pretty much your basic one or character input, it's only output. So you cannot use this if you have a Win Mini or Win Pro or, you know, a Blue Sound Stream or something and you want to turn this into a streaming CD player, you cannot do that. This is a purist option only. And again, in this day and age in 2023, that might put you off. However, let me switch you back on again and talk about what it sounds like. Because it sounds really good. This costs £2,300. That's as of today on the internet. Prices in the UK are all over the place because of inflation. So that might be more uh, when you look at it, whenever you're looking at it. But let me tell you right now, for £2,300, this represents excellent value because the sound is top, top notch. So what does it sound like? What's its character? Well, <laughs> interestingly, back to what Haifa magazine, I read their uh, review of this, and I think they said it leaned slightly analytical from memory. This does not lean slightly analytical to me. To me, this sounds pretty you know, hi-fi terms, musical, what does that mean? Well, it's quite laid back. It casts quite a nice um, sort of palette of colours, so there's loads of detail, but it's always you know, tending to be quite relaxed. It's never pushing things forward at you. It gives you a nice wall of sound. The sound stage is tall and wide. It's not the widest or the tallest, but within that, it's very pleasurable. It's easy to pick out some of the um, nuances of the sound. And it's, it's incredibly easy to listen to for a period of time, you know, two or three hours, if I had two or three hours, but it's certainly very easy to listen to for the hour that I give it each day. Now, what does it not sound like? Well, it's not aggressive. It's not um, a party animal. You're not gonna put it in and think, oh yeah, I'm really gonna just, you know, go crazy. It's not gonna excite you instantly where it's got tons of um, attack or, or transient attack. Although the transients are quick, they don't really thump or hit. And the same with the dynamics really. The dynamics are definitely very good here, but they're not going to shock you. But remember, this is a 2,300 pound product. It displays CDs, it's got a DAC in there, which is the Cyrus DAC. And 
it gives you a very easy to listen to, very complete sound. I think that's how I would describe it. There, there isn't really a major weakness, but there isn't also this kind of standout strength. I mean, perhaps the dynamics actually from a, a micro point of view because of the detail is one of the top strengths, but it's, there's nothing here which I would say is hugely bad, but I wouldn't say it's hugely like blow your mind epic as well, but that's good. It kind of gives you this all rounded approach, which, which is quite unusual actually, because sometimes things are voiced to be specific to a type of person or you know to offset another component in the system. This is very well rounded. If you've got a very neutral rest of your system, then you pop this in and yeah, it makes beautiful, beautiful music. What did I listen to whilst I was reviewing the Cyrus CDI-XR? Well, I don't know why this was, maybe because of the dynamics and the, um, the sort of laid back nature, but I went classical, which isn't normally my thing. But first of all, I went to uh, Hauser. This is his album with the London Symphony Orchestra. It's called Classic Hauser. You've got stuff like Swan Lake, um, Caruso, uh, River Flows in You, the um, Yoruma song, but it's all done on a cello. It's beautiful music. This is a really, really nice CD. I highly recommend it actually, if you want to kind of relax and at the same time feel stirred occasionally when the right track comes along. There is beauty in here, but there's also passion in the way that Hauser plays his his instrument. He's a true musician and yeah, lovely, lovely CD. Going on from that, I went to films because I actually quite like classical music when it comes to films. And this is a great CD. This is a, a, a classical violinist called Anne-Sophie Mutter, if I pronounce that right. And here she is uh, with John Williams and the album's called Across the Stars. And you've got Ray's theme from uh, Star Wars, the new Star Wars. Possibly the best thing from the new Star Wars films is the soundtrack. Uh, you've got Yoda's theme from the classic Star Wars. You go to Hedwig from Harry Potter through to a bit of Donnybrook Fair. Uh, we've got a bit from Dracula with Night's Journey and it's rounded off with a theme from Schindler's List. There's, there's a lot in here technically in terms of how a violin can be played. She is an absolute virtuoso, this lady, and um, I'm in awe. I'm also in awe of John Williams in the way that he can create timeless classics in film uh, soundtracks and just continually churn out brilliant, brilliant music. I mean, just look at the films and look at this man's talent and then look at the musician's talent and it's just a wash with awe. I'm just, yeah, well impressed. And then into vocals, we're also going kind of pop opera here. We've got Il Volo, the best of 10 years. This is a trio uh, of tenors from uh, Italy. Uh, fun facts, they actually uh, went into Eurovision one year. I think they must have come second. They didn't win it, um, but they are very, very good. Again, I think here, an Italian singers, particularly opera singers or pop opera singers, are very good at conveying emotion and um, passion. Back to passion, and I think that's the word for this CD player, passion. It gets that across, it kind of really swells and, and moves. But here you've got, you know, classics like Smile and Caruso again, but, you know, sung. Um, Avidecci Roma, that's a favourite, that's got a nice kind of bounce to it. You almost feel like you're in a bar in Rome, sipping on an Aperol spritz and eating some uh, Queen Olives. It's a, it's a lovely album again. This one actually comes with a DVD, so you can watch it afterwards as well. So that's what I was listening to when I tested this deck and also other things as well. The reason I lent into the classic music is because this isn't a CD player I would be getting personally if I was into a lot of dance music. Again, I would prefer a bit more of an aggressive DAC. I know that sounds strange, but something with a bit more transient attack. You know, you'd have to pay more money, but going up to a TT2 would kind of blow this away for speed and attack. But remember, this has the CD function in it, whereas a TT2 has a preamplifier and it also um, works really nicely because it's got digital inputs because it is a pure DAC, so it's not really a great comparison, is it? But I'm trying to tell you sonically that this is a laid back performer that does scale very well, does passion very well, moves you very nicely, but it's not going to kind of blow your socks off with the plucks of a guitar string or, you know, the attack of um, drums and stuff like that. That's, that's not going to be this, so I wouldn't be playing hard rock through this, unless, of course, the rest of your system is tipped that way and then you've got the balance, haven't you? So 
you know, it, <laughs> horses for courses, I always say it because it is always true. It depends what your system's like and what you're matching. But what I'm trying to do here is give you a flavor of what this feels like as a CD player, as a unit on its own. And it does have its weaknesses. Like we say, the design choices at the back in terms of the RCAs and the uh, power socket and a lack of digital input, which really is frustrating, does mean that it's kind of like a, a recommended product for Sonics if you just want a CD player. Let's talk now about the upgrade path, back to that serial cable that we looked at earlier. Another black box, let me grab it uh, for you. This one's much heavier. This is the XR PSU, the power supply unit. Oh, this must weigh about 10 kilograms. Um, looks very similar, doesn't it? So we're back to that design cues. Oh, it is heavy, uh, of Cyrus. Uh, you'd think I'd be better at this, lifting a baby all the time, but, but clearly I'm not. Interesting thing about this, when you set it up, let me turn it around. You put in your power cable on the right there, and then you attach your serial cable here. Now, you can attach this PSU unit to pretty much any of Cyrus's XR range, so you can attach it to their CD transport if you like, or their integrated amplifier, I think that's called the i9. And what it'll do is automatically detect the product that it is connected to and optimize the power delivery for that product. That's pretty cool. I think. What's not so cool is, of course, if you've got two Cyrus products, say you've got this CD player and you've got the um, integrated amplifier, if you wanted to really soup them up and upgrade both of them, you'd need two of these units. And the problem with these units is they cost £2,400. That's more than the CD player on its own. So expectation has kind of shot right up here. We're up to uh, £4,700, quid, right, for the combination we've got here with the CDI XR and the XRPSU, so it's gotta be good. How does this change the sound? Well, it does change it quite a lot, and this is weird, right? Power supplies really do make a difference, and this is a good one. This is a really good one. Um, what does it do? Well, it, it, it just sort of, I'm gonna use audio file terms here, and I apologize. It makes everything a bit clearer. I'm not gonna say lifting the veil, because that's crap but it, it makes everything a, a lot clearer, a lot more defined. That attack, which I mentioned before, which isn't really so much there just on its own, really comes back. We've got transient attack, we've got clearer detail, better separation, bigger sound stage, amazing dynamic sound. The dynamics are insanely good. It carries a rhythm really well. And I'm starting to think now this combination, yes, it can do dance music. Yes, it can do hard rock. This is a, an all-rounder, a much, much higher level. So is it worth £4,700? Yeah, it is, if you want a pure CD player that is top-notch for that sort of money. But no, if you want something that can also carry streaming and, and can act as other things. And that's where you're back to the TT2, which I kind of mentioned earlier, which is more in this price range. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. The problem you've got, of course, is once you've gone down this route, you, you find it very hard to go back to listening to CDI XR on its own because it is a notable improvement. It, it's, it's, does it double the quality with double the cost? No, but I think if I was to put a percentage on it, you're, you've, you've got 50% better at least. So maybe you're paying 100% more and you're getting 50% better, which actually in hi-fi terms isn't a bad deal because often the law of diminishing returns says that you get a lot less for what you spend. You might say, what other options have I got in CD player terms uh, around either the price of the CDI XR on its own or with the PSU unit? Well, we're going to park that mainly for now because I'm going to look at some other CD player units and then we'll have a bit of a roundup video at the end. But I have to say to you, this is an excellent start. And my reference here is the Luxman uh, D10X, which costs £15,000 as a CD player. Um, and how does it compete with that? Well, I'll tell you now, obviously it's not as good, but it's not, you know, D10X is not three times as good as this. Again, we might be looking in relatively small margins with a big price gap. That's the kind of level we're looking at here. We'll talk more about the D10X when we get to that. We'll talk more about other CD players when we get to that. But if you're considering the Cyrus products and the CD player, know this, you're getting a great sounding CD player, which can be upgraded fantastically with this, but you're not going to skimp and scrape and have a, a very cheap product here. You're paying pretty much top dollar for a top dollar sound, but you get what you pay for. I think it would be very difficult 
to find a CD player at this level at £2,000 or below. And that's the rub here, guys. You, you pay for it, you get a really good option. You can start with a CD IXR, you can upgrade it, you can enjoy music and have a good all-rounder. That is quite rare in hi-fi terms. An all-rounder that can be upgraded. Cyrus, UK Engineering, double thumbs up. Really good stuff. Anyway, thank you very much for listening. We'll see you back here very soon for more CD player reviews and also a couple of speaker reviews as well. Um, so we've got quite a lot coming up, so we'll see you very soon. Thank you very much.